All right, everyone, so let's talk about the latest Eastern conflict between Eastern people killing each other over land. You have the Armenians on one side and the Azerbaijanis on the other, and the two are killing each other over a piece of land called Najorno Karabakh. It lies within Azerbaijan, and it is internationally recognized as being a part of Azerbaijan. The Armenians, on the other hand, they say, no, no, Najorno Karabakh is a part of Armenia. It is part of Greater Armenia. And so the Armenians and the Azeris have been fighting and arguing over this since the late 1980s when it was quite inevitable that the Soviet Union was going to decline. The Armenians are laying claim to nagorno karabakh because the region is inhabited mainly by ethnic Armenians. So they say, hey, most people who live there are our people, so it belongs to Armenia. And the Azeris are saying, no, 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 the international community says... Najorno Karabakh belongs to Azerbaijan. And a very interesting thing about this whole situation is that Najorno Karabakh is ruled by a government within the government of Azerbaijan. It is ruled by a de facto government called the Republic of Arstok. And the Republic of Arstok is not internationally recognized as a legitimate government. Although you have countries like Russia who support Armenia's side of this uh, of this conflict, uh, ultimately, what you are seeing is is nothing new, nor remarkable, nor really surprising. You have two uh, Eastern peoples who are killing each other over land. Nothing really that surprising. We've been seeing this sort of thing uh, for a while now, uh, going back to the late nineteen, going back to the nineteen nineties. You had uh, you know Serbia versus everyone else in Yugoslavia, and then you had the Palestinians versus the Lebanese in the late 70s and in, in the 1980s. The, the Palestinians and the Lebanese were killing each other over land. Palestinians believed that Lebanon, you know, parts of Lebanon rightfully belonged to them because they wanted to establish this Palestinian state. Uh, and then, you know, in 2014, the Ukrainians and the Russians were fighting each other, and then you had the Russian before that, uh, you had the Russians and the Georgians fighting each other, so uh, this is not really that surprising. Um, ultimately, this is a proxy war, and what you are seeing is nothing new. What you're seeing is something that's been going on really for centuries. You have two poor countries uh, fighting each other for land as proxies for wealthier and more powerful countries. Um, Armenia is being backed by Russia and the regional power of Iran while Azerbaijan is being backed by uh, NATO countries, specifically the United States, Germany, and Turkey. And Azerbaijan is also being supported by a NATO ally, Israel. Um, it's really not that surprising that Israel supports Azerbaijan, given the fact that Armenia is an ally to Iran, which currently is the biggest enemy of Israel. The Russians, they're supporting the, uh, the Armenians, and the Turks, are supporting the Azerbaijanis. Ultimately, you know, while you have other outside players involved in this conflict, ultimately this is a proxy war between Turkey and Russia. The Turks and the Russians both, historically speaking, have had control over the Caucasus. Russians had control over the Caucasus when they had their big czarist empire, and also during the Soviet Union, Russians had control over the Caucasus. Uh, the Ottoman Empire also had control over the Caucasus. So these two big powers, they want to revive their empires. They want to revive their control over territories that they once ruled over. Uh, they want to revive their old territories, in other words. That's why you have Turkey supporting the Azerbaijanis. Now, the Armenians understand that ultimately they're not really going to war with Azerbaijan. Ultimately, they are warring against Turkey. And there are numerous stories about Turkey's involvement in this current conflict that really reflect this reality. For one, Turkey is sending in Syrian rebels to fight as mercenaries for the Azerbaijanis against the Armenians within Nagorno Karabakh. Now, the Turks are denying this, but there have been several reports that really substantiate this. You've had articles from Reuters and from, I want to say, The Telegraph, or the, the yeah, The Telegraph, I think. Uh, there have been numerous substan substantial reports on this that really uh, uh, evidence this. Uh, Turkey is sending in Syrian fighters from Syria and also Libya 
to go to Nagorno Karabakh to fight the Armenians. There are actually there was a report that came out this morning about how they are now Assyrians who are like, hey, we thought we were just gonna guard some some base or something like that. We thought we were sent to Azerbaijan to guard a border or something. Like here we are fighting Armenians. Like what the hell? Uh, because the fighting is uh, quite intense. Um, and also, there is a very interesting story. There was actually an air battle between the Armenian Air Force and the Azerbaijani Air Force. And it, it, it involved two planes. You had one Armenian fighter jet. Um, the fighter jet, I believe, was an Su-25 fighter jet. And then you had a Turkish pilot who was manning a, an American F-16, or a Turkish F-16, because while the F-16 is ultimately American, the Turkish F F-16 is part of a collaboration between Turkish uh, and American uh, te technological innovation. So it's known as a Turkish F-16. The Turkish F-16 got into a fight with the Armenian um, uh, fighter jet, and the, the Turkish pilot destroyed the, um, the Armenian fighter jet. Now, this is a, a story that's been reported in Armenian media, uh, but of course the Turks are denying it. Um, but the Armenians affirm that this story actually did indeed take place. Um, if it did indeed take place, it wouldn't be really that surprising, given the fact that just a couple of months ago, uh, Turkey parked a bunch of its F-16s within Azerbaijan and also began to conduct uh, 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 collaborative training sessions with the Armen with the Azerbaijani military as a way to instill fear into the hearts of the Armenians. The Armenians said, hey, we know what you guys are doing and uh, we will not tolerate any sort of uh, aggression on the part of Azerbaijan with the help of Turkey. So the fighting you know, has been taking place. Dozens of people have been killed. Hundreds of people have been wounded. It's really, really a big mess and it's very, very bloody. Um, hopefully the fighting will end, but it looks like Turkey is interested in making sure that the fighting continues on because as long as that fighting takes place and, and that it continues on, Turkey has a, a, a situation of chaos that it can take advantage of in order to expand her uh, 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 political leverage in the Caucasus. Russia also is going to be using this opportunity to spread its influence in the Caucasus. In fact, Russia just recently proposed uh, peace talks between Armenia and Azerbaijan, and these essentially would just be uh, peace talks uh, mediated by Russia, and it would just be uh, a way or really an opportunity for Russia to expand her influence in the Caucasus. It's kind of like Germany getting involved in peace talks in Libya. Like, what, what was that about? It was obvious that it was about Germany uh, uh, reviving and expanding her uh, geopolitical influence. Another interesting thing that's taking place is that France is also getting involved, and the French are siding with the Armenians against the Turks. Now, what would make the French, this big NATO superpower, side against a fellow NATO superpower, Turkey? I think this really goes back to recent history. Uh, before the outbreak of World War I, the French and the Russians had already made an agreement that if one of them uh, were to ever be attacked, the other country would defend the attacked country. So if France was ever attacked, the Russians would defend the French, and vice versa. And so the French and the Russians historically have this um, history of being allies. And also the French have a history of helping the Armenians against the Turks. During the Armenian Genocide, the French were responsible for rescuing tens of thousands of Armenians from the Turkish reign of terror. So it really isn't that surprising that the French would be doing this. Um, you're starting to also, or really you have been seeing this sort of thing in North Africa, in Libya. In Libya, you have the Turks supporting the government of national accord, and you have the Russians and the French supporting the opposing proxy of Khalifa Haftar, the forces of Khalifa Haftar. They are a proxy for the Russians against the NATO-backed government of national accord the French and the Russians are both supporting Khalifa Haftar against the government of national accord. So the French are supporting a Russian proxy. Again, France is 
not only a very powerful NATO country, but is also one of the founding countries, one of the founding members of NATO. So why would France be doing this? Because of those historical ties to Russia, because of that history of having an alliance with Russia. Alliances are very difficult to break. Alliances are very difficult to, to just get rid of. Um, when Germany unified as a country in the late 19th century, one of the first things that it did was make an alliance with the Ottoman Empire. And to this day, Turkey and Germany are very, very close. So what you are seeing in this whole conflict, while the conflict itself is not new nor remarkable, you know, you have two Eastern people killing each other for land, right? Nothing really that new. While there's nothing really that remarkable in the conflict unto itself, what you are seeing taking place around the conflict is very remarkable. You are seeing the revival of empires. The Russians are taking advantage of the situation because the Russians want to expand their influence in the Caucasus, specifically using the Armenians against a major Turkish ally, Azerbaijan. And then you are seeing the Turks using the Azerbaijanis against the Armenians. And the Turks have been extremely active in the Caucasus, specifically in Azerbaijan, just as the Turks have been very, very um, uh, active in the, in the Balkans. The Turks have been very active, especially in Albania. Why? Because Turkey used to control the Balkans. The Ottoman Empire controlled the Balkans. Um, the Russians, at one point in time, had a, had a lot of influence in Yugoslavia. So what you're seeing are, are two superpowers, Russia and Turkey, trying to revive their empires. That's why you really have to ask yourself, why is Turkey doing the things that, that Turkey is doing? Why is Turkey doing what it's doing? You see Turkey working to expand and to encroach in the Eastern Mediterranean. Turkey is angering the Greeks by its desire and its plan to encroach into Greek maritime territory in the Mediterranean. Uh, Turkey is working to control Libya for its natural gas. Turkey is beginning to encroach on Egyptian maritime territory. Turkey is working to encroach on, on, on the Greek part of Cyprus's maritime territory. You are seeing Turkey being heavily involved in the South Caucasus in this particular conflict. Turkey is being uh, quite involved in, the, um, in Crimea, which was at one point in time a part of Ukraine, but then the Russians took it over. And now the Turks are using the, 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 um, the Tatar Turkic peoples who live in Crimea. They're using those people almost as a proxy against the Russians, or they're at least trying to use those people. So Turkey is expanding her influence in the areas of the world that Turkey used to control. And so what you are seeing is the revival of empires. And ultimately that is what's occurring in this whole situation. So there you have it. That's my take on this current event. You guys just heard some theology. God bless.